Welcome back to Equip to Endure. I am Rusty. We are going to talk about something I know that you've been begging and pleading for more of. You wish there could be more Ridgeline videos. And you know I'm just kidding with you because last week I was making fun of it. But here we are. And I didn't want to add to this pile, guys. But I was doing some testing of different products and I think you might be interested. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so first off, what is a Ridgeline? Why do we spend so much time talking about it? So a Ridgeline, put quite simply, is just taking a line of sturdy cordage or something, right? You can make ridge poles as well, and it's used for hanging shelters. It's used for creating rain catchment systems. You can use it as a clothesline. You can hang your lanterns from it around camps, any other assortment of tools. So it just becomes a really useful thing to be able to tie off quickly. And the principles we're talking about today are things that you would use any time that you want to tighten the line. So you may have heard of the trucker's hitch, which I'm going to talk about real briefly. So I kind of thought we already had this problem solved and then people kept digging into it. And so, yeah, we figured in the community that, okay, let's kind of push this idea a little bit further. So the most basic, basic trucker's hitch that we do with the ridge line, you just loop the line over, you take it, you work back toward where you're going, you create that loop, okay? You run your loose end, your tag end through, and this creates a tackle, basically a pulley, that when you pull back on this, it tightens up the line, okay? Pretty straightforward, obvious. Now, the problem with this, a couple things. One is as you're putting that much tension on it, you may have seen videos before where people actually use paracord to uh, cut through like restraints or that kind of thing. This rough nylon material can actually be used to saw through things, and I'll show you an example of that in a little bit so first of all you're putting that tension on this important piece of cordage that you may need you don't want to cut this in half and have to keep tying it together it's nice to have a solid stable piece so when you pull back on this you pinch it off and you can throw in whatever loop you want in there usually just a slippery half hitch or whatever you do and there you got a taut ridge line okay so that's putting tension on this and it can be tricky if you want to go really tight it can be a little tricky to pinch that off and tie it off so what we started looking at doing is okay if this is the problem having this piece of tackle that we created with the slippery uh hitch here so let's just pull this guy out you can get that out so then what people started doing was taking a pressic now this has already been destroyed and we'll show you footage of that later, but the Prusik is still here. It's this with all these frayed ends. And guess what cut through these frayed ends? It was the paracord as we were doing this. So we can take our loose end here. Let me grab this guy, pull it through. So now do the same thing. So instead of creating our loop on the main ridge line, we have this prusik, which is adjustable. And that's the other benefit of having the prusik is if we do the, the line or the loop in the actual line, you kind of have to fiddle with it and it's not as easily or quickly adjustable. So the prusik solves that. It takes the pressure and tension off of the main ridge line that you want to keep and reuse and it's adjustable. So we got this in and then same deal. We pull back on this to, to do the same principle. So now this little prusik line is taking the abuse, not that. Now the problem is this is often gonna be a smaller diameter cord because that's what grips better to whatever you're using for your ridge line, whether 550 cord, 750 cord, or anything else. And so we may just cut right through that. If we want to preserve our cord, and if we wanna keep something lightweight and easy to use and create a really taut ridge line, what are some other options? Now, this one has been making the rounds and becoming popular. Dave did a video on this. All respect to Dave, no insult or anything. Actually, Felix, too. I saw him do that. Really great video on how he creates toggles that he uses around camp, whether on his backpack, to hang up his backpack, whatever. So, what we do is we just have a stick that we drill a hole through, and then same kind of deal. We use our prusik, we bring it over, and then we take this toggle, stick it through the loop, and then as we pull back on this, this toggle works to hold that in place. 
Now the problem with this, and I'll give you some B-roll close-up shots of this as I'm talking, as you can see, it starts to dig in to the wood. And also the thing that's keeping this locked in place is this Prusik loop is pinching off the line. And that's, think of it like this. If you're sawing a piece of wood and you add even more pressure down on top of that saw and you're sawing, it digs in there even more. And that's what happens with this loop. When you pull and tighten on this, it's kind of constricting on that and it's cutting into this line even more. At least that's been my experience. Again, you, uh, you physics whizzes out there can answer that in more detail. So again, the whole point of this was we want to not put the abuse on our main line. We put it on the Prusik, but if we can get this Prusik to last as well, now we have the added functionality of the flexibility, the adjustability of the Prusik, and it can last a long time and we keep the abuse off the line. So then what is our solution? Now, if this was Shark Tank and I was presented with this, I would say for these reasons that it cuts the line that you either have to make it when you're there or carry it with you, I'm out. Because if I'm gonna carry it with me, I've got some other options that I've been looking at. So let's take a look at those. All right, just a Prusik, a little bit thicker cord here. I actually really like this. It's a kind of tinder cord by SOL, Survive Outdoors Longer, that I've been messing with using it on lanyards and stuff and I've been pretty impressed with it so far. Okay, here's one solution. Remember, here's the problem. We want a taut ridge line and we want to preserve it and not burn through it. And ideally we have a very adjustable Prusik to take the pressure off of that and also not burn through the Prusik, okay? So carabiner is a very easy solution. You probably already have these floating around. So this is what it would look like. You just run your line through it. So we made that tackle with this and then as you Go back, the Prusik is pinching the main line, holding it in place, and then as we tension, we basically created a pulley, and now we can tie this off. So same thing, we need to pinch that, and then we can throw our loop over and do whatever we need to to make sure that stays in place. Let me get that bad boy. Ugh. And I have, there we go. Okay. Now this is pretty strong. Just with that slippery half hitch in there, I can go ahead and lean on this, put my weight on that, and that'll hold me. Okay, nice and strong there. Little tough to get it taut in there and keep it there as you pinch it up. Now, here's a couple mission specific pieces of kit that were created for this very, very thing that we've been talking about. All right. Night eyes, you've probably seen little gadgets that they create around Walmart or on Amazon or things pop on up your feed, but they make some pretty neat little stuff. So this is something called the Cam Jam. Now this is the plastic version, the lighter weight version. It's a little bit over a half of an ounce. Now it's got the beaner, the carabiner on one side, and it's got this mechanism in the middle. So we'll show you what this does. It's almost like a ratcheting system. So we're gonna connect that to our Prusik that's staying put because the Prusik is gripping the line. And now the way that this mechanism works, I'll try to bring it a little closer to the camera, see if I can focus right in here. We're gonna feed the line through the back. Let me show you what that looks like. And then as we feed it through, here's what we can do. We fed the line through. Now, as we pull back, you see that lever that's opening up to allow the line to enter that now that locks in place the spring pulls that back and so this is closing on itself like a ratchet so when you pull back on this at any point when you release that lever is going to clamp on it and so this is one-handed operation now you can get so tight with this lighter weight plastic piece it's some sort of polymer and it works pretty well and if you want to make sure that that doesn't back out again just throw a half hitch in there and you're good to go but here's what we noticed as we were testing this. And when I say we, I was out with my daughter showing her this stuff, which is what inspired this video. So you can thank her for that. Now, what we noticed is that the harder that we pulled this, especially on an angle, that this wheel mechanism, this lever that rotates, was getting a little bit off track and the line was sliding down between the carabiner body and that wheel so that it lost its functionality. Now, not a big deal, right? You can just put a little pressure on that to close it and make sure that that lever stays on the track and actually grips the line. But 
that is an issue if you're trying to put this in something like a survival kit or 72 hour kit or bug out bag or something you want something that you don't have to fiddle with now and again that goes back to another point is this is a really neat concept and i'm not going to knock it but it does have that extra moving part in there that can potentially be an issue overall really really cool concept hands-free it grips on that itself and then the release is super easy you just pull it out to the side and you feed that back through now with the feeding thing that is another thing that i'm not a huge fan of is if you know on this setup that i have right now i've only got a few extra feet of tag line but if i had 15 feet then i gotta go find the end of that and feed an extra 15 feet of line through that hole not my favorite but still better than uh, burning up my line by not having it so we're going to go ahead and switch to the heavy duty version of this all right this is the cam jam feels like an aluminum body everything in here feels metal so we're going to go ahead and throw this on our prusik okay same functionality it's got the hole in the back with that lever on the front so you thread your line through that back side then as you pull it you get it into that gap with the lever and then as you pull it self tightens and clamps down on it this one is heavier duty but here's my problem with it this one weighs over an ounce i think it's close to an ounce and a half actually now you may think that doesn't matter i like to learn from every branch of this outdoor community including the ultralighters who try to go as lightweight as possible now we'll probably put together another video about how you compare the military survivalists versus the bushcrafters versus the ultralighter through hiker types and we can all learn from each other but i would say for this particular piece again i don't like necessarily the moving part if this isn't my kit that i'm relying on in the wilderness i'd rather not have a moving part if i can avoid it for the last device that we're going to look at this is night eyes again this is their figure nine beaner now this is the small version the lightweight and it says it only has 50 pound working capacity i have found that to be false now we're going to try something else at the end that may end up getting me hurt i hope not but we're going to try it now another thing that we like to mention is that ideally anything that we pick we can do with one hand right if it is truly a survival situation we've got an injured limb we're winged somehow or another it's nice to be able to do this all with one hand with this device there are some little inscriptions on the bottom that tell you how to feed it through it looks a little complicated it is not all you do is you grab your line and i can do this one hand if i wanted to but for keeping it centered in the camera i'm going to go ahead and show you this so you have to feed the line from the back so we're just going to go ahead and slip that in and then you just pull back on that okay now i thought that this would be really hard to get this to wind around without losing the tension on it but it's actually not that bad i'm just going to keep it here you run it behind again and then back into those teeth and that is it now i did put pressure on this and it did slip out of those teeth when i was putting you know 205 pounds on that and muscling through it but it, all you have to do just put that half hitch in to keep that backward pressure so by putting that hitch in, whoop, I flicked it at you. By putting that pressure in, that keeps the line taut into those little teeth on the bottom of this figure nine. Why do I like this one so much? I will just say that this one is my favorite out of all the options, okay? I think it's good to be able to know how to use a toggle if you need it. Because if you end up in a situation where you don't have this, this is really good knowledge to know how to use this. Or just creating the trucker's hitch and doing it that way. All right, so why do I like the Night Eyes Figure 9 so much? One, it's got the carabiner, multifunctional. You can take it off if you don't want it sitting on your ridgeline, use it for something else. You can clip things into it while it's on the ridgeline. Carabiners can be very functional. The thing only weighs 12 grams. 12 grams, that's less than half an ounce. You barely, barely feel it. And if you're in the situation where you're gonna be packing in your toggle one way, or whether it's a wood or something else, have it be functional, made of materials that will not rot or corrode, super strong and lightweight. That's really, really hard to beat. 
For those reasons, that's why this is my favorite. Again, you clip it into your Prusik. That takes any abuse off the line, which you don't even need to worry about, by the way, because with these synthetic materials, this will hold up to any of that rubbing that you're subjecting it to with the paracord, so you don't even need a Prusik. However, the Prusik does give you that adjustability. So for that, I leave this on. Now, I'm not sure where you're gonna see this, so I'm gonna put pressure on it right here. I'm leaning out into it and it is holding. Okay, it is holding all of my weight. It's like I'm just resting on a lounge somewhere. And it's got it, it didn't give, didn't break, nothing. 12 grams. For my final trick, we're gonna do a little bit of a torture test on this as we do it equipped to endure and see what we think. This might be something I regret. It's not too big of a fall, I'm just standing here, but I'm gonna pick my feet up. Hopefully you can see it in frame. And I'm just hanging from this. There's a piece of cherry tied to the paracord, wrapped around the figure nine, which is around another piece of paracord, tied to the swing set, which is again why I wanted to shoot here. So let's see what this looks like. All right. Well, it looks like I broke the swing set, but not the actual figure nine. That beam actually split a little bit, but I'll be all right. My kids are a lot lighter than I am. That held up. That's pretty impressive. It says it's only intended for 50 grams, but it just held up 205 swinging, non-stable non uh, weight. So there you go. Well, guys, there you have it. We took a look at the toggle, we took a look at the trucker's hitch, we took a look at the normal carabiner that you may find sitting around, we took a look at the cam jams, the polymer lightweight version and the aluminum version, and we took a look at the figure nine by Nye Eyes. Now there may be some other options out there I'm not familiar with, I tried doing uh, my best to research out there, but for my money, everything that we've tried, this is what I'd stick to, this is what I want in my kit, the figure nine, I like how lightweight it is. I like how versatile it is with the carabiner, and I'm pretty impressed with the strength and durability of it. Now we put our stamp of endorsement on this product. If you're interested in picking it up, please hook us up. Go ahead and hit the link down in the description below. It'll be an Amazon affiliate link. Go ahead and pick up some of these. I actually just bought a four pack of these myself. I think it's really handy. I can make sure that my I have one, my wife has one, a couple of my kids have them. So there it is, guys. That's our take on what we think is the best way to tighten a ridge line or any other sort of line that you need to put tension on or tighten up for whatever you're doing, whether it's a workload, whether it's out camping, whether it's a survival situation, whatever. We like this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful. Hopefully we saved you guys some money and some time and frustration with having to buy these yourself and test them out. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. We're going to put out another video next week. That should be pretty interesting, a new take on an old topic, and we will see you around in Omnia Paratus.